There are far worse things, great men, than death. What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG down there on the YouTube.com. We like magic. You know by now. And today, I'm coming at you with a dark horse contender for your next Grand Prix. This is White Black Midrange. This deck actually has a lot of cool stuff going for it. It's got substantial threats at every point of the game. It's got some of the best removal we can play right now. And it's got the two best Planeswalkers in the format. So literally everything a midrange deck could ask for. We got, so let's start with the creatures. Now we're going to play some one drops because we want to get on board early. That's really important right now. So let's play four copies of Thraben Inspector and two copies of Toolcraft Exemplar. Now, the play set of Inspector Gadget is pretty much standard at this point. You know, we want artifacts in this deck for a couple of different reasons, and you're looking at one of them, Dualcraft Exemplar. Um, we also want a body we can put out early that comes with some card advantage on top, just like many, many good reasons to play Thraben, and we'll definitely play the play set. Now, as far as Tim the Toolman over here, he's a little bit different. He was actually the first cut that I made in the deck. I was playing three copies of this guy, but went down to two. You know, we actually don't play as many artifacts as, like, the Mardu Aggro deck, so there's that, and we're not as aggressive as those decks. We're not looking for, like, turn five wins because we just got these, like, blindingly fast, you know, turn sequences in the early turns. We're not really weighing so, you know, leaning so heavily on strategies like that, so I just didn't think he was as important. Another reason that we don't need the four of Exemplar is because we've got plenty of stuff to crew Heart of Kieran. That's one of the best things you can do with a Toolcraft Exemplar on, like, turn three, so we got other ways of crewing Heart of Kieran pretty easily, and one of them is the excellent Scrap Heap Scrounger, which we're also going to play a playset of. This guy's just really good right now, even though Control isn't quite the deck we thought it would be, and he's very good against Control. That's one of his main functions. But he's still pretty good against all the aggro in the format that plays, you know, four copies of Fatal Push at this point. It plays four copies of Unlicensed Disintegration. So no matter what we're playing against, this guy's going to hit the graveyard a few times. And the ability to bring him back, especially with, like, the 15 other creatures in the deck or whatever, is just, you know, something we want to be able to do so, so that we stay on board as much as possible. We're resilient to board wipes and stuff like that. Again, it crews hard of Kieran easily. It's an artifact for Toolcraft Exemplar and another thing we're playing that requires artifacts. We'll get to that in a second, but Scrap Heap Scrounger is just a great creature. It's above curve as far as power toughness for its casting cost. It keeps coming back. It is an artifact. Just so many... I love Scrape Heap Scrounger <laughs> right now. If you haven't noticed, he's been in a bunch of decks lately. That's because I think his utility is like through the roof. And even though he can't block, he does so many amazing things that we're definitely going to play all four. Now, as far as our three drops here, we're just going to play two three drop creatures. And it ended up being two copies of Thalia. Now, the reason I say it ended up being Thalia is because originally I was playing Fumigate in the main deck. And while Fumigate was in the main, Yahini was in this slot that Thalia's in now. It was cool to be able to, like, sacrifice one of her own dudes, keep Yahini indestructible, play the um, Fumigate, and then once all their creatures die, Yahini gets a bunch of counters and can swing in on an empty board. That was cool, but ultimately, I didn't think we needed Fumigate in the main. It ended up in the side, and when Fumigate got pushed to the side, Yehini got pushed out of the 75 entirely. But if you wanted to go that route, you could do that. Yehini's in, like, Selfless Spirits and a couple of Fumigates to, like, basically be a wipe deck that keeps your own creatures out. That's a cool strategy and all, but ultimately, it didn't feel as just utility and as powerful as something like Thalia, which is really good right now. Not only is this pretty good against the cat combo, if you can keep it out, you know, it's it dies to shock, but if you can keep it out, then it keeps them from doing cat combo because all the cats will come in tapped and then removed from the game at the end of the turn. So, and it's also pretty good against all the vehicles decks in the format right now because it keeps creatures from crewing vehicles the turn they interplay. So I think that there are just enough reasons to play Thalia to put her in the main board right now. She is that good. She's also really pretty. We're going to play one copy of Kalidus in the main deck here. And originally I was playing two copies of Kalidus in the board, but I moved one in from the board to the main because I think it's that good right now. But I don't want to carry all of the copies of it or anything, at least in the main. But the one copy is nice. It's good to have that silver bullet against aggro because it is quite good against aggro. It's not great against Heart of Kirin, but it's good against literally every ground threat that those decks play. You know, they usually stop at three power for the most part. 
Um, unless you're playing against green black aggro, but you know, against all the, uh, the Mardu and, and the vehicles decks, the Jun decks in the format, they'll usually stop at three power. And so something like Kalidus is just fantastic. You know, it stays on board for a long time, gets bigger as the game goes on, plays well with all of our removal, you know, so just, you know, it gives us zombies and stuff. <laughs> it's just got the lifelink. It blocks one creature and negates the damage from another because of its lifelink. There's just... Kalidus is so good. Kalidus is so good right now, and I'm more than willing to carry at least one copy in the main. One more one of in the creatures here. We're just going to play one copy of Noxious Gear Hulk in the deck and carry another one in the sideboard. I think the card is really good right now, but I don't want a bunch of six drops, especially considering we're playing something even higher on the curve than this. But Noxious Gear Hulk is just obviously a super solid creature, and it counts as an artifact for like Toolcraft Exemplar or something, so that's cool. Um, and, you know, just <laughs> kills a guy when it comes into play. That's cool. We're playing Liliana in the deck. So if they kill our Gear Hulk, we can just keep getting it back with Liliana, keep killing their dudes. So just a huge threat that can end the game. <laughs> so let's play at least the one of Noxious Gear Hulk. And against, like, heavy aggro and stuff, let's board in that other copy. Last creature here, we're going to play a two of... Herald of Anguish in the deck. We're playing something like 13 artifacts in this deck, which isn't a whole lot compared to like the Marty Vehicles decks and some decks that want to play like 18 to 20 artifacts. We're not playing that many, but we are playing enough artifacts to to easily cast a Herald of Anguish, unlike turn five a good bit of the time. But even if we have to wait until like turn seven to cast a Herald of Anguish, it's completely worth it. Like against control decks and against decks that like to hold cards in their hand, it's obviously good. And it's even good against aggro. You don't really see a whole lot of cards that are good against like mid-range control and also aggro. So that's, that's pretty good right there, you know. We can sacrifice like Scrap Heap Scrounger to this guy, give a creature neg two, neg two, and then get the Scrap Heap Scrounger back. That's good synergy right there. And it's just a huge flyer. Which huge flyers tend to end the game? This is actually like above Heart of Kieran right now, which is important. It's above like Avacyn if you happen to see that. It's above um, Aethersphere Harvester. And it can kill small guys. And it makes them discard cards. And we can play it for like five mana. Just Herald of Anguish is probably the best card with Improvise, or at least the best payoff card with Improvise. So even though we're not playing a deck like full of artifacts, like 20 artifacts in it or anything, we are playing a deck that can su sufficiently put this into play on turn 5 or 6. And again, even if you have to wait till late, it is definitely worth it. This thing ends the game pretty easily. We're going to play four vehicles in the deck, and you've already guessed what it is because I've mentioned it a couple of times. We're going to play four copies of Heart of Kieran here, and I know... It's really expensive, but this the next few cards are going to be very expensive. And I apologize for this deck being as expensive as it's going to end up being, but we're trying to, like, win a Grand Prix here. So, you know, we got to, like, be as competitive as possible. So I apologize for the expense of the next few cards, but we want to play the best cards, and Heart of Kieran is definitely one of them right now. This also ups our artifact count, which is pretty important for, um, for Exemplar and for Ang Herald of Anguish, so there's that. Um, and it's just in incredible. <laughs> you know, two mana, four, four, flying vigilance. We've got the planeswalkers to help crew it. We've got a bunch of creatures to help crew it. You know, toolcraft exemplar, scrap heap scrounger, thalia. Um, if we get a Gideon emblem, then Gideon can produce guys that um, that crew this thing. So there's just a lot of different ways to make this thing work right now. And since we can, we definitely will. The card is just super powerful. And since we're in white black, we have the two best planeswalkers in the format to help crew Heart of Kieran. We're going to play two copies of Liliana and three copies of of Gideon. Now, right here you're looking at about $150 worth of cardboard, and I'm sorry about that. That is unconscionable, but again, we're trying to play the best deck we possibly can, and this is mostly a, a theoretical build. <laughs> There's no way I could afford this deck. I, this Again, I work mostly with proxies and stuff, so... I've had a lot of fun playing it, but there's no way I could actually do it in real life. But we're just trying to build the best deck. Um, and these two go a long way towards being able to do that. Just Liliana's pretty good against all the little aggro creatures in the format. And her second ability is crazy. It represents, like, extra gear hulks in the deck. It represents, you know, extra herald of anguishes after they've, if they've killed those, you know. So, you know, extra Kalidases and Thalias and all that after boards even better. So we've got a bunch of creatures that are really, really advantageous to bring back from the graveyard. And Liliana is good at that. Not to mention that if she ultimates, you'll win the game. Let's just say, by now, we just if you ultimate at Liliana, you kind of win the game. As long as you can hold off for a couple of turns. So, 
Well, Liana's yeah, just so dope. At all, always. <laughs> we're going to play a couple copies of her. Um, and as far as Gideon goes, he's just the other best planeswalker right now, you know. Dropping a, a, a resolved Gideon is another thing that just kind of wins you the game more often than it should. Just Gids is probably the best planeswalker in standard right now, all things considered. Considering he goes in so many different things. And just, again, you resolve Gideon and you have just like increased your chances of winning the game by like 70%. Like he's just sad. he's that good right now. And that's because we're in a format with a bunch of like cheap removal and stuff. You know, we've got like Fatal Push, we've got Unlicensed Disintegration, Grasp of Darkness. You know, we've got Wipes like Fumigate that like the Jeskai deck is playing. Yehini's Expertise will come out of some sideboards. So, huh, like right now, Creature Kill is a thing that will happen. It will happen. <laughs> so having something that produces free creatures every turn at zero loyalty is just ridiculous. So we're going to play at least a few copies of him. There's 10 other spells in the deck, and they're pretty much all removal spells. We're going to start with four copies of Fatal Push, and yeah, I will play all four copies of Fatal Push, even though we don't have a whole lot of ways of activating Revolt right now. You know, we've got like Herald of Anguish, is in the main deck, so there's that. We've got, like, the clue from Thraben Inspector. We can activate Revolt with that, you know. But there's not really a whole lot of ways to make it work other than, like, creatures dying in combat and stuff. Um, but, you know, we can, like, remove a Gideon. We can get the emblem and get the Revolt on Fatal Push. So there's that, too. It's just not a whole lot of ways, but it's still good even without that right now, you know. It takes out tokens, which are actually a thing right now. It takes out Toolcraft Exemplar, Thraben Inspector, Vendor's Apprentice, Scrap Heap Scrounger, everything in two, Heart of Kira at an instant speed. Just like, the card is so stupid right now, even if you don't have Revolt, that we're definitely going to carry all four copies. And as a matter of fact, I, have, I think that Fatal Push could make a point for being the best card in standard. So we will play all four. We're also going to play three copies of Grasp of Darkness in the deck just because, you know, cheap removal. Cheap removal, and it disrupts the Sahili combo, you know, just target Felidar Guardian at instant speed. Breaks that up, kills all the small creatures in the format just like Fatal Push does. Can kill a Verderous Gear Hulk when its trigger's on the stack. Just lots of good things that a Grasp of Darkness can do right now. So it's definitely do that. Kills, like, the Snake while the Rishkar trigger is on the stack, so that's good too. Just, like, lots of awesome stuff that this does. So let's play Grasp of Darkness. It's just cheap and it's easy. As far as removal goes, let's play two copies of Anguish Done Making here, which sort of serves as our unlicensed disintegration, but it also in a lot of ways feels worse than unlicensed. Instead of dealing three damage to the opponent, we take three. <laughs> that that's just seems a lot worse, but it can also take out any permanent. Unlicensed Disintegration doesn't roll any non-land permanent, and Unlicensed Disintegration doesn't have that going for it. That's cool. We can take out Planeswalkers and, like, non-creature artifacts. Those That's very important right now. Um, and also it Exiles, which can be important against Graveyard Strategies and Scrap Heap Scrounger and stuff, too. So I think that it's got a couple of things that make it worth playing without it feeling just like a a strictly worst unlicensed, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but the, the ability to take out Planeswalkers and things like Aetherworks Marvel at instant speed is just important enough to include in the main deck. And and it breaks up Sahili combo. With, you can target either, either piece and break it up. And to finish off the spells and the main deck, we're going to play just one copy of Transgress the Mind in the deck. Now, a lot of people might not make this call, but I've always liked to carry at least one copy, if not two, of Transgress in, like, white-black mid-range and control boards. And I do think Transgress is a card that's kind of being slept on right now, you know? Even against the aggro decks in the format, this will take out any Planeswalkers that they're playing, it'll take out Unlicensed Disintegration from their hand, you know? A lot of um, post boards, it'll take out a lot of stuff. Like, those decks like to board in, like, Sky Sovereign and stuff, and... I'll take care of it. So even against aggro, the card is kind of fun because it's got a lot of really good targets. Against green-black counters, this can take Rishkar out of their hand or Verderous Gear Hulk out of their hand. Lots of good stuff against that deck, you know. Against um, Control, the card really, really shines. And against, you know, um, uh, mid-range decks and Sahili combo and stuff, the card can get either piece of Sahili combo out of their hand on turn two. It's just... This, deck, or this card has good play against pretty much every deck in the format, and it gives us something else to do on turn two. <laughs> you know, we don't have a whole lot. We've got, like, Scrappy Scrounger, um, Heart of Kira, and Grasp of Darkness. So I wanted, like, one more thing that we could do on turn two to give us a little bit more versatility, and Transgress is the thing right now. Again, I think people are sleeping on this card too much. It's just got an awful lot of play in this format. 25 lands in the deck, and it's not super complicated or anything. You know, it's not like the Mardu Vehicles mana base. And if anything, 
that's one of the reasons to play the deck over something like Marty Vehicles is because the mana is just a lot better. And Marty Vehicles has decent mana and all, but you'll never have to worry about like, oh, where's my second black source? Or at least you won't have to worry about it too often. Or, you know, where's my red source? <laughs> you never have to worry about that. So I like the mana a lot better, and I think it's one of the better reasons to play the deck. As far as the uh, lands go, the only other point I want to make is that we might be able to carry Spire of Industry in this mana base, but with only 13 artifacts, I keep saying 13 artifacts, I'm counting Thraven Inspector, because it creates an artifact. But with 13 artifacts in the deck, I just don't know that we quite have enough to pull this off. You know, if maybe we were playing 15 or 16, I'd be more comfortable with Spire, but as it is, I think we've got the mana we need already. Here's your sideboard right here, and we've got a bunch of one and two of, so let me go through these real quick. We're definitely going to play the four of Fragmentized, though, because it takes out Heart of Kirin pretty easily, and a bunch of the, you know, other artifacts that are being played right now. So definitely play Fragmentized, I think it's that important. Um, another Transgress the Mind against everything that transgresses. Good against, um, but mostly against the control decks is why, I'm, is why I'm playing the second Transgress. Lost Legacy is in there, mostly against the combo decks in the format. This performs very well against Sahili when you're on the play, so there's that. Um, Murder and Ruinous Path. Now, Ruinous Path is in there as another tool against Planeswalkers. I wanted to play To the Slaughter, but I just don't think that we activate Delirium um, easily enough to be able to pull that off. But, but Ruinous Path can just outright kill Planeswalkers. Now, Murder is in there also against the Sahili combo and against things like Green-Black Counters where the creatures get really, really big. And our only, you know, protection against something like that is uh, Anguish Done Making in the main board. But it also has play against Torrential Gear Hulk. We don't have a whole lot of ways of taking out a Gear Hulk if we're playing Control. So game two, we'll put in the Murders, and that'll give us an instant speed way to just kill that stupid thing. Sky Sovereigns, just card is very, very good against Mardu Vehicles right now. So I'll carry a copy in the board. Two copies of Fumigate, also against Mardu Vehicles, and aggro decks like Jund. Um, and we really could play Fumigate in the main, but we're playing just enough creatures that I don't think it's quite advantageous enough, but it comes in on boards when we're playing against Marty Vehicles and Jun, and it performs very well in those matchups. Now, Noxious Gearhold, we'll play the last copy of. Against a few different things, it performs okay against aggro if we can get to it, but it's very, very good against these green-black mid-range and delirium decks and stuff, so it can take out a Verderous Gearhold or a big Rishkar or anything that's gotten huge, like Gifted Aetherborn or something. So, Noxious Gearhold is just good against those decks and provides us more late-game reach with something like Liliana. And here are your power rankings, a final score of 69, which is a very, very high score, because the deck is not bad in literally anything. The deck has a fair amount of versatility, you know, it's on board literally all game. We got one, two, three, four, five, six drops. We've got, you know, removal all game to help keep the other side of the board clear so we can keep our threats getting through. We've got planeswalkers in the deck to, you know, give us a lot of mid-game and late-game advantage. Those are really good top decks, too. You know, we've got Heart of Kiran to, like, press an early advantage, which is one of the things that this deck wants to do, and that makes it pretty similar to something like Mardu Vehicles, you know. A deck like Mardu Vehicles and Green Black Counters are good at one thing, and that is creating an early advantage and then advantage, and then pressing that into the mid and late game. Now, we do that, I think, a little bit better than those decks in some ways. You know, Noxious Gear Hulk is in the deck, Liliana is in the deck to continue giving us value out of Gear Hulk and Herald of Anguish, Herald of Anguish is in the deck as well. So we've got all these like mid to late game threats that some of these other decks don't carry. But even though we've got a bunch of mid and late game threats, we've also got a bunch of early game stuff. You know, we've got Thraben Inspector, Toolcraft Exemplar, we've got Scrap Heap Scrounger, we've got Thalia, Heart of Kirin. So we do get that early game advantage that those decks get, but we press it, I think, a little bit better because of all of our late game reach, you know, and Liliana provides an awful lot of that. Noxious Gear Hulk and Herald are there to help out with that too. Gideon's there, you know, just... There's a lot of really good late game options in this deck, but that doesn't mean that it sacrifices its early game. And I think that a deck like that usually ends up being a pretty good deck, and this deck has done very well in testing so far, being able to beat a lot of those Mardu aggro decks that I've come across. The deck just really doesn't have a whole lot of weaknesses right now, you know? It's sort of weak to Sahili combo if combo, you know, if you don't have an instant speed removal piece at the time, the combo can just come down and kill you, so it's sort of weak against those, especially if it can't resolve its threats against the control versions of those decks. But we get on board fast enough that we can usually pressure it, pressure a Sahili pretty easily if they want to play that. You know, Heart of Kiran is, or of Kiran is very good 
at pressuring an early game Sahili. So we've got some game against those decks, but if I had to pick one deck that we're weak against, it's probably those. You know, it's like a 40-60 matchup in their favor. But everything else, we've got at least 50-50 game against right now. The deck is just really powerful, and it does deserve that power score of 9. We're just playing, like, all the most powerful cards in the deck in the format minus unlicensed disintegration. But that comes at a price. This is the most expensive deck that has co that I've covered all season. It's somehow more expensive than Marty Vehicles. This deck will cost like four hundred dollars on TCG player to build right now. So this is only for the very, very serious about tournament plays, you know, crowd. But I hope that this was still an entertaining deck deck and maybe you'll run up against this at an FNM and you'll know what's in it. And that'll help you, right? So <laughs> I just think that though, that at the end of the day, this is an actual contender for like a GP. You know, I think that this actually could pull off an actual top eight win. I'm serious. Like this deck is very, very, very good and has a lot of reach as compared to some of the other decks in the format. So try it out. Let me know how you feel about it, Spikes. And even let me know how you feel about it, more casual players down there in the comments section. How could we change this deck? What did I neglect to include? Stuff like that. Did you like the Yehini idea more than the Thali idea? There's a lot of stuff to comment on about this deck because Orzov has some of the best cards, probably the best cards in the format right now because, you know, again, if we're not counting unlicensed disintegration, there's just not a whole lot of reasons to play red, honestly. So, you know, Chandra, I guess, is fine. But anyway, if we're not counting unlicensed, there's really white and black are like the best colors right now. So we're playing all the best cards. <laughs> there's that. But for now, I'm tapped out. What are we doing next time? Now, I've got a few people in the comments that are really excited about Esperagro. We will get to that, although Esperagro is kind of similar to this list <laughs> right here. It just adds like a couple of things, you know. Some some versions play Tezzeret, not all. Some versions play um that new insul artifact thing that Tezzeret's touch, you know. But there's really not a whole lot. Like it play like Spell Queller and stuff. There's really not a whole lot of differences between this list and that. You just add the best blue cards. But we will get to that list, I promise, because it does have a lot of good things going for it. But there's a couple of things I want to get to here very soon. One of them being the Grixis Dynavolt Tower deck. I've got that list finished, and it's also like that deck is fan freaking tastic, so I'm going to bring that to you really soon. I know a few of you are excited about that. But another deck I want to bring to you soon that I've been working on that's actually like it's got really good results is red white humans and a lot of people were trying to build this deck at the beginning of the format and not having as much like success with it as they wanted but i think that the format has come around enough that we know what we're up against and we know what works and right now red white humans is doing a lot of work for me in testing so i really want to show you that deck and it's going to be a little bit cheaper than this one but anyway that's all we got for this one you can hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and you can also sub if you're new or if you just haven't subbed yet and then hit that bell to make sure you get the notifications when i put out new videos i'm dev from svmtg this is julie getting comfortable to go to sleep again in my lap and we'll see you guys next time thanks for watching my wizard Thank you.